Okay kids, I'm Chef Mike coming to you from the barbecue area of the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains and this is Trigger. So what do we have on the grill today? Let's take a look. That's right, barbecue guns, fresh and hot from Cimarron. Okay, we're back in Dragon House Studios and before I take you through this beautiful single action in front of me, maybe a little explanation is in order. A couple years ago, I'm down in Texas, Fredericksburg, Texas, with my friend Mike Harvey, who owns Cimarron Firearms. You've seen him on Shooting Gallery, you saw him on Cowboys, you've seen him on Triggered. But he said, I got a great idea, Michael. What if I made barbecue guns for the masses so everybody that wanted one could have a barbecue gun? And I said, well, I, I think that's a pretty good idea, Mike. Okay, let's table that because you're wanting to know what's a barbecue gun. First time I heard the phrase was from two Texas Rangers. We were filming shooting gallery down in Texas. The Rangers had stopped by to watch his film and talk about the shows. And they had these incredible guns. One had a single action like this. The other one had a Colt 1911, all nickel, all engraved, ivory grips, hand tool leather holsters. And I'm like, that's not Ranger duty gear, is it? And the guy goes, no, man. We got an event after we leave here. It's a big Ranger event. It's a barbecue. And you just don't wear any old gun to a Texas barbecue. The phrase barbecue gun's been around Texas and the Southwest since the Wild West days. It is your Sunday go-to-meeting gun. It's the gun that you wear when you want to impress people. So it's appropriate that the first Cimarron Frontier 6 shooter that I'm going to show you here is the Texas Ranger version. Now these guns are made by Pieta in Italy to Mike Harvey's exacting standards. This one was designed in conjunction with the Texas Ranger Museum. And a portion of the proceeds from each of this gun is going to the Texas Ranger Heritage Center that's being built in Fredericksburg. If you look at this gun closely, and I looked at a lot of pictures and I've, I've looked at a lot of the Ranger guns, the original Wild West Texas Ranger guns, this is engraving very consistent to what you would see on those guns back in Wild West, 1800s, mid-1800s forward. You've got Texas, the Lone Star State right back here. You've got engraving also on the hammer. And on the ejector housing, it says, one riot, one ranger, which has been their slogan for many years, I think since the 1920s. But to me, what makes this exceptional is that laser engraving has moved to the next level. Is, is laser engraving uh, as cool as, as paying $10,000 to have somebody chisel the engraving in? No, it's not. However, it's engraving that you can afford. It's engraving that if you want to shoot this gun cowboy, you can shoot it and not feel like, oh wow, I'm throwing away my entire kid's future. You can see the Texas Ranger emblems on both sides of these simulated ivory grips. We all wish they were real ivory grips, but I'm sorry kids, those days are long gone. This to me is, is an absolutely beautiful gun. But the neat thing about Mike Harvey and Mike Harvey's vision for frontier six shooters that honor a lot of the old west is if you don't want to go down the Texas Ranger path, we've got another one for you. Here's the second of our Cimarron Frontier barbecue guns. This one, once again, 45 long Colt, a four and three quarter inch barrel as well. These simulated ivory grips and an engraving style that's consistent with the engraving on the single action army owned and used by George S. Patton. Four-star General George S. Patton. See those four stars? Now this was modeled on a gun that he carried when he was riding with Black Jack Pershing hunting for Pancho Villa down in Texas. So this is pretty much the exact engraving style that was on that single action that rode on George Patton's hip. One of the cool things about old blood and guts was he wasn't kidding. Uh, Patton practically conned, if you will, Black Jack Pershing to take him along as an aide. Pershing was going on unauthorized raids into Mexico chasing Pancho Villa who had raided Columbus, Texas. If you want to know the history of that, I strongly refer you to Tom Russell's great song, Tonight We Ride. 
Pancho Villa crossed the border in the year of 16. The people of Columbus still hear him riding in their dreams. He killed 21 civilians. You can hear the women scream. Black Jack Pershing on his dancing horse was waiting in the wings. So they rode. But the cool thing about George Patton is he didn't ride a horse. Instead, Patton had three like 1916 Dodge touring cars loaded up with shooters. So for the very first time, the American Army went into action in cars instead of on horses. Patton actually chased down one of the leaders. He found where he was hiding out, one of Vila's leaders, and he led his cars in and quickly surrounded all the bandits. Now this is like the first time ever that we used a mechanized transport to put troops in place and Patton opened up with his single action army and shot and I think finally killed uh, one of the bandit leaders and the first thing he did was something that actually Mike Harvey didn't do. I don't know why he didn't do it. <laughs> Patton put a notch on his gun. That's where you hear about notches on the gun. He actually put another notch on there a little bit later. But here you can see Patton's initials on it very, very much the very uh, model of the gun that George S. Patton carried, which is, is, is really neat. By the way, he didn't carry a single action army into World War II or World War I. By then, he had made the decision that, to go to the 1911, but I believe he did get ivory grips and, and nickel-plated all of the above. So that's why you want this gun. Maybe you can get the 1911 next year. Mike Harvey, if you want to do another barbecue gun, I think that might be one to add to the list. But one of the things I noticed about all these guns, by the way, is they have exceptional trigger pulls, just exceptional trigger pulls. Um, they're fitted, and, and you can tell very much that these are specifically fitted guns. Um, it's not often that you say, wow, you'd go out and buy an heirloom gun at a reasonable price. Most of these guns are in the seven, eight hundred, high $800 range, not off the charts. But hey, if you're a cowboy action shooter, wouldn't it be cool to have two of George Patton's gun? When triggered returns, we're going to show you more barbecue guns, Simmer on Firearms. This week's Triggered is brought to you by Rock Island Armory, Taurus, designed to protect, Franklin Armory, some of the coolest guns in America, Ammo Man, still offering $10 off any order of $150 or more with the promo code TRIGGERED, and Lipsy's and their wonderful Guns of the Month. Welcome back to Triggered, where we're taking a look at Cimarron's barbecue revolvers. And take a look at the engraving on this guy. Once again, as I was saying, laser engraving has come a long, long way since its birth. Initially, laser engraving was, uh, dare I say it, cheesy. You would see guns that, that looked like, I don't know, it was kind of etched pretty badly on them. But modern laser engraving has gotten better and better and better. And I think what you see here is a magnificent example of modern laser engraving. This particular barbecue gun from Cimarron, this Frontier, is an homage to Buffalo Bill Cody, uh, one of my personal heroes, one of, one of the great masters of American BS. Uh, <laughs> Cody and his Wild West shows were absolutely trendsetters at the time. They were, in effect, the Netflix of the late 1800s, early 1900s. We travel the world, travel Europe. So it's not surprising that Buffalo Bill Cody had a couple of single actions. He probably had a hundred or a thousand single actions. But this particular one, the kind of model for this particular gun, which has the great engraving, and here on the, here on the strap is his engraved signature, which, hey, that's kind of cool are modeled on a 250 gun run that Colt did many years ago. So 250 custom single actions that were Buffalo Bill custom guns. And this gun, from again from Pieta in Italy, is very much based on those custom Colt guns of that 250 gun set. If you want one of those 250 guns, feel free. They go up for auction very rarely, but when they do, there's high six-figure tags attached to them, low seven-figure tags. 
But with this guy, once again, you're looking in the $700 to $800, $900 range for really great looking single action. To me, the, the engraving here just pops out of this gun. Um, this, is, this is what you really want in an engraved gun. From my standpoint, I think this is a five and a half inch barrel as opposed to the four and three quarter inch barrels we've been looking at. This gun has the best action of all. And for me, I mean, I, I think this engraving is just exceptional. Um, I, I like engraving. I really like embellished guns. Interesting point is that uh, a lot of my friends who, for all of us years, when we would be shooting IPSC, you know, we'd be shooting USPSA, and, and we would uh, disdain, disdain embellished guns, engraved guns, nickel-plated guns, uh, because, well, you know, we were like real shooters. And it turned out the real shooters, uh, the gunfighters of the West, really, really liked the concept of an embellished gun. Um, these bright nickel finish. These, this is a nickel, essentially a bright polished nickel. And a lot of the Western guns, this always surprised me when I started going to uh, museums, uh, very much a gun much like this that was owned by Buffalo Bills in the Autry. There's a couple of more that are in the uh, um, museum in Cody, of course, his namesake museum. How many of them were nickel? And that's because nickel was, was a finish that lasted longer than bluing. So ironically, if, you know, if you're, if you're a cowboy, if you're a gunfighter, and you got a gun coming in and out of a holster, you're riding on a horse, it's coming in and out, nickel plating would last longer than the bluing, it better, better at rust prevention. So this guy right here, the perfect barbecue gun, you know, think about going to your evening barbecue and somebody says, what do you got there? I said, well, I got Buffalo Bill's gun. One more to go. Let's take a look. We can't have barbecue guns without having one that's a replica of Teddy Roosevelt's single action army. Teddy Roosevelt, TR, believed in three things. America, Winchester, and Colt. So when TR was a cowboy, and he was for real a cowboy, and he went out west, and he got a single action army very much like this, seven and a half inch, uh, nickel plated, heavily engraved ivory grips. I wish these were ivory, but hey, what can we do? He said that he went west with equipment that was made in the most expensive style. Now, Autry has the original that this gun was based on, and it's probably uh, one of the, oh gosh, half a million dollar guns floating around out there. But it was TR's cowboy gun. He had his initials cut here. He has TR on the other side of, of um, the loading gate engraved over here. Now, when he had it done, Colt had it done by Louis Nimsky, who was the greatest engraver of the time. And in fact, if you were to say, name me the three top engravers of the time, Nimsky is always going to be in that list because Teddy Roosevelt had a lot of money. But, I mean, of all the barbecue guns, of the four barbecue guns that Mike Harvey's put together here, of his four frontier single-action armies, this one, to me, is, is maybe the best. Uh, I looked very closely at uh, TR's gun the last time I was at the Autry, and we looked at it as closely as the curator would let us. I said, would you mind if I handled it, shot it, dry-fired it a couple of times? He goes, no! Um, very loudly, no. I, I don't know what it is with museum curators. Phil Schreier always makes me put on gloves, but he lets me like handle the guns. But anyway, I looked at that gun very closely, and so I can tell you that, that, that this type of engraving, the engraving that they've got on here, pretty closely replicates that gun. So that's one of the things I especially like about it. I like the seven and a half inch barrel, you know. That was truly the standard length for Colts when uh, the single action army came out 1873, you saw seven and a half inch barrels. That's what was issued to Custer's troops. Well, what are you gonna do? But this guy especially, the action is just superb. You know, which is, I, I would expect TR's gun to be. I would, I would have liked to have found that out on the original, but hey. The action is good. Uh, the gun balances better than you'd think. Um, I never was a big fan of long barrel revolvers because I again came out of the practical shooting sports and we went short and quick. But I found that when I started shooting single action guns, the, uh, 
uh, that's the replicas of single action armies, all handled very well with that seven and a half inch barrel. They're not muzzle heavy. Now initially you'd think, well that's kind of muzzle heavy, that's kind of muzzle heavy, but it's not. It's not. Um, I think it's a beautiful gun. I like the TR engraving on the side, uh, on the grips. Uh, I, I think this would be a, an ideal gun to have somebody make you custom leather for, I don't know, Colt Farrell, one of the great custom leather makers working in America, or Rob Leahy, who does wonderful leather carving for Sim Simply Rugged, any of the specialty cowboy makers, Nick Asani, in South in South California, Southern California, he hasn't escaped yet. He may be trapped there. But this is the kind of gun that you want to say, okay. What I want you guys to do is to create a holster that does justice to these barbecue guns. And like I said, as I get older, I do appreciate the engraving. I do appreciate the embellishment, and I I appreciate the connection to history. And, and Mike Harvey does that as well. One of the things that he has done with Cimarron is he's built replicas that tie back both to the past, to the Texas Ranger past. He's built replicas that tie to the movies, which a lot of the history of modern firearms ties there. But he's built primarily guns that when you put them in your hand, they feel right. So Mike Harvey, great guns. Everyone needs a barbecue gun. This is a good way to start. I am Michael Bain. You can find Trigger always on michaelbain.tv, also on YouTube, on my celebrity page on everest.com, and you know, check under the couch. We may be there as well. We will see you next week.